Good evening. Good evening. And the Lord be with you. May he bless our time together in his word. One friendly reminder, next Saturday night we're going to have a fellowship after our service. And right, right immediately following the service down in the fellowship hall. And if you're willing to make a snack for that or to share that we might be able to share that, please, there's a registry to sign up right next to the church office. Right out in the narthex. Okay, if you get a chance. Good time for us to have some fellowship together. We only do that about once every other month or so. <laughs> so it's very nice. Any visitors with us, we welcome especially, and if we can be of service to you in any way, be sure and let us know. We'll follow the service of prayer and preaching on page 260, our opening hymn 584. stand. This is the day which the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Sanctify us in your truth. Your word is true. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever.
Please be seated as we give attention to God's Word. The Old Testament reading. The Old Testament reading for the 16th Sunday after Pentecost is from Isaiah chapter 35. Say to those who have an anxious heart, be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance, with the recompense of God. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then shall the lame man leap like a deer and the tongue of the mute sing for joy. For waters break forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool and the thirsty ground springs of water. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We read responsively Psalm 146. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, O my soul. Put not your trust in princes, in a son of man, in whom there is no salvation. When his breath departs, he returns to the earth. On that very day, his plans perish. Blessed is he whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord his God. Who made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, who keeps faith forever. Who executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bound down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the sojourners. He upholds the widow and the fatherless, but the way of the wicked he brings to ruin. The Lord will reign forever. Your God will Zion to all generations. Praise the Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The epistle for this evening is from James, the second chapter. My brothers, show no partiality as you hold the faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory. For if a man wearing a gold ring and fine clothing comes into your assembly, and a poor man in shabby clothing also comes in, and if you pay attention to the one who wears the fine clothing and say, you sit here in a good place, while you say to the poor man, you stand over there, or sit down at my feet, have you not then made distinctions among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Listen, my beloved brothers, has not God chosen those who are poor in the world to be rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom? which he has promised to those who love him. But you have dishonored the poor man. Are not the rich the ones who oppress you and the ones who drag you into court? Are they not the ones who blaspheme the honorable name by which you were called? If you really fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. You are doing well. But if you show partiality, you are committing sin and are convicted by the law as transgressors. For whoever keeps the whole law but fails in one point has become accountable for all of it. What good is it, my brothers, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can that faith save him? If a brother or sister is poorly clothed and lacking in daily food, and one of you says to them, go in peace, be warmed and filled, without giving them the things needed for the body, what good is that? So also, faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. But someone will say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith apart from your works and I will show you my faith by my works. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We rise for the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the seventh chapter. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. 
Jesus returned from the region of Tyre and went through Sidon to the Sea of Galilee in the region of the Decapolis, and they brought to him a man who was deaf and had a speech impediment, and they begged him to lay his hand on him. And taking him aside from the crowd privately, he put his fingers into his ears, and after spitting, touched his tongue. And looking up to heaven, he sighed and said to him, Ephatha, that is, be opened. And his ears were opened, his tongue was released, and he spoke plainly. And Jesus charged them to tell no one. But the more he charged them, the more zealously they proclaimed it. And they were astonished beyond measure, saying, He has done all things well. He even makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, o Christ. We continue with the responsory printed on page 263. Forever, O Lord, your word is firmly set in the heavens. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. The Ten Commandments. You shall have no other gods. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Honor your father and your mother. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or his manservant or maidservant, his ox or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. The Apostles' Creed, I believe in God the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We'll continue now with the next hymn, hymn 528. You may be seated.
Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The text from the Gospel lesson, And they were astonished beyond measure, saying, He, that is Jesus, has done all things well. He even makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. One of my favorite stories is about three retirees who were walking along, talking to one another, and one said, windy, ain't it? And his friend answered, no, it's Thursday. To which the third friend responded, me too, let's get something to drink. <laughs> Isn't that the way it goes sometimes with, with hearing and speaking? Have you ever had someone accuse you of saying something that you didn't say, and yet that's what they heard? I think we can all relate to that. Both the Old Testament and the Gospel lesson this evening have something to say about hearing and speaking. In the Old Testament lesson, Jerusalem was facing destruction because her people sought shelter in the lies and the, the falsehoods that were around them instead of in the Word of God. However, in the words of the prophet Isaiah, there was a promise. And that promise we read just a moment ago in our Old Testament lesson, a promise that beyond the day of destruction lies a day of restoration. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, Isaiah said, and the ears of the deaf unstopped, and the tongues of the mute sing for joy. Jesus stands before the people in our text and he stands before us in this gospel lesson as the fulfillment of Isaiah's words. He quoted these words as evidence of his being the promised Messiah that they were expecting. It's in Matthew's gospel, you may remember, that we read about John the Baptist being in prison and sending his followers to ask Jesus, are you the one who is to come or should we look for another? And remember his response, go tell John what you hear and what you see. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear and the dead are raised up, and the poor have the good news uh, preached to them. Go tell them what you hear and what you see, and tell them plainly, bringing stubborn and rebellious sinners just like you and me to give up on our own efforts and our own merit and to trust solely in Christ's righteousness is something only a gracious God can do. The Apostle Paul outlines the steps that are taken by our gracious and merciful God in his letter to the Romans in order to lead people to him. It's recorded in Romans 10. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And get the questions. How are they to call on him in whom they have not believed? Well, they can't. And how are they to believe in him of whom they have never heard? Again, it's not likely. And how are they to hear without someone proclaiming, someone preaching? And how are they to preach unless they are sent? The apostle then continues, as it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news. Certainly words that apply to preachers and teachers who are called to do so in the church, but also words that apply to moms and dads and grandpas and grandmas, any, anyone who has the opportunity to proclaim God's word to young and old alike. This quote, anyway, how beautiful are the feet, is another one from the prophet Isaiah, and it refers to those who brought the exiles the good news of their eminent release from the Babylonian captivity where they had been taken because of their unfaithfulness to God. And here the apostle applies the words to gospel preachers who bring that good news of release from captivity of sin through faith in Jesus Christ. He says, Faith comes from hearing, and hearing through the word of Christ. Right before our gospel lesson this evening, our Lord had confronted the Pharisees with their hypocrisy concerning his disciples 
eating with unwashed hands. Remember that from last week's gospel lesson? He had told them there's nothing outside a person by, that by going in can defile him, but the things that come out of a person are what defile him. And he spoke about their need to be concerned about clean hearts rather than clean hands. From within, out of the heart of man, comes evil thoughts and actions. And no amount of man's efforts can cleanse the heart. That's the work of the Lord through the gospel. Right after this teaching, our Lord went up north to the area of Tyre and Sidon, apparently to get away, but it wasn't to be. He wasn't there very long before the people found out he was there. And he was confronted by a Syrophoenician woman whose daughter was possessed by an unclean spirit. And she begged Jesus to cast that demon out of her daughter be, and because of her persistence and because of her faith, we're told that he granted her request. And that's where today's gospel lesson really begins. It says he returned from that region of Tyre and Sidon and went to the Sea of Galilee in the region of the Decapolis. He was well known in the region of the Decapolis. That's 10 cities that were around that area near Galilee. And he was known there because of his a cure of the demoniac out of whom he had cast a number of demons to go into a herd of pigs who then rushed over a precipice. Matthew records that in his gospel. He also records this time of our Lord's ministry telling about how human need always rushed to the Lord. Great crowds came to him, Matthew says bringing with them the lame and the blind and the crippled and the mute and many others. And they put them at his feet and he healed them. Mark, in our gospel lesson, zeroes in on one individual. And they brought to him a man who was deaf and had a speech impediment and they begged him to lay his hands on him. What must have been going on in that man's mind as he stood before Christ and before all of those people? No doubt all eyes are on him. It's hard for us to even imagine a soundless world or the frustration of not being able to speak clearly so that others can understand what you're saying. For a deaf person, it can be very upsetting, very lonely, very painful to see people talking to one another, punctuating their sentences with smiles or frowns or laughter, and not knowing what they're talking about and wondering, are they talking about me? Deaf persons are easily embarrassed in crowds, especially when people are not sensitive to them. Well, such is this one brought before Jesus in our text. Notice the sensitivity and the compassion of our Lord. The people had begged Jesus to just lay his hands on the man. And this is our Lord's response. Taking him aside from the crowd privately, he put his fingers into his ears. And after spitting, touched his tongue. And looking up to heaven, he sighed and said to him, Ephatha, that is, be opened. Jesus took the man aside, away from the crowd, away from the stares of the people, away from the confusion, and spoke to him one-on-one -on -one in a way that the man must have understood. Fingers in the ears, touching of the tongue, gazing toward heaven. The man's attention was riveted on Jesus, and no doubt these actions had meaning for him. Ephetha, our Lord spoke. It's an Aramaic word and it means, means to be opened completely, to be released. The idea or the thought expressed in this word is that the whole person, not just his ears, not just his tongue, but also his heart, the whole being of this person is opened up to a whole new way of hearing and speaking and living. The result of Jesus speaking this words recorded in the next verse. 
and his ears were open, his tongue released, and he spoke plainly. And Jesus charged them to tell no one. But the more he charged them, the more zealously they proclaimed it. And they were astonished beyond measure. He has done all things well. He even makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. Ears opened, tongue loosed, spoke plainly, truly a miracle of healing. The people were amazed. They were so excited that they told everyone about it, even though he had said, don't tell anyone. Now, why do you suppose he said that? Why do you suppose he asked them not to tell anyone about this? No doubt he knew that many who saw this miracle would misunderstand it, just as many did in the feeding of the 5,000 and many of his other miracles. They wouldn't see this as the presence of the promised Messiah foretold by Isaiah, but they would only see the miracle itself and focus on that and the power of this man Jesus to give them what they want. When I read a text like this one, I ask myself, where do I fit in here? You know, where do we fit in? You know, I can hear, I can speak, so can all of you. So what is God saying to us in this text? Perhaps there is a clue in the words recorded earlier in this chapter of Mark's Gospel, where he quotes again the prophet Isaiah who said, and you'll remember these words from last week's lesson, this people draw near with their mouth and honor me with their lips, while their hearts are far from me. See, Jesus encountered this kind of spiritual deafness many times throughout his ministry. Remember the context of this gospel lesson. The Pharisees' attitude toward cleanliness was all wrong. They heard Jesus wrongly, and they spoke wrongly when applying his teachings. Their concern was clean hands, dishes, food. His concern was clean hearts. They wanted nothing to do with the Gentiles. He cast demons out of a Gentile woman's daughter. They were concerned with stopped ears and tied tongues. He was concerned with opening up not only his ears and his tongues, but his whole life, this whole person to his redeeming grace. By looking up to heaven and sighing, Jesus directed that deaf man's attention as he directs our attention to the truth that everything comes from God and that with him nothing, truly nothing is impossible. Although the work of salvation is done and the forgiveness of sins is secured by the cross, it cannot come to us in any other way than through the word of Christ. Faith comes from hearing and hearing through the word of Christ. And the word of Christ is Jesus speaking the gospel through his messengers, whoever that may be. It's God's will that that gospel should be heard. For with this word, the Holy Spirit comes and is present and opens hearts and opens lives so people can pay attention, understand, and be brought to faith. More tragic even than physical handicaps such as deafness is the bondage to sin. More important than freeing ears and tongues is freedom from sin's power and eternal death which comes through faith in our Lord. A sinner cannot come to believe in God by his own free will any more than a deaf man can will himself to hear. It's the Lord's work. And just as Jesus used his fingers and saliva to open up this deaf man's ears and to loose his tongue, so he uses earthly means his preached word, the holy sacraments, in order to open up dead hearts, in order to work faith in us, to enable our tongues to confess. No one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit, thus it is written. There was a time um, in my active ministry when 
someone came to me wondering about whether or not God's forgiveness in Christ could really cover the sin and the guilt that she was experiencing because of an awful sin that she had committed. She was so focused on the sin itself that she was deaf to the forgiveness that was hers all along. Then there was the man who came and questioned whether God fully realized his everyday need or loved him enough to really do anything about it. He was deaf and blind to the Lord's promises and to the presence of the Lord being with him all along. And finally, there was the person who expressed his doubt this way. God's forgiveness is really great, but it won't pay the bills. It won't bring back my wife from the grave. It won't take away my need for surgery. I guess I'm on my own for all of these things. He was deaf to the Lord's encouragement to call upon him in the day of trouble and the promise, I will deliver you. I will be with you. I will sustain you. See, these examples of deafness are from people who have been members of the church their whole life. They have heard with their ears the message of God's love in Christ Jesus. But they were hurting so badly because of their doubts. They were wondering whether God could love them at all. Their hearts needed to be touched. Needed to be touched with the message of Christ's presence. His forgiveness even in the midst of those doubts. And strength for them in the middle of their struggles. I tell you, it was only as I was able to go aside with these folks and to share God's word one-on-one, -on -one, especially the gospel, that each one of them through a process of confession and absolution and a process of immersing themselves in the word were freed from their bondage. In today's gospel lesson from Mark, we see the cure for such doubt, the cure for such unwelcome thoughts and suspicions. It's confession and faith in Christ. And such confession and faith comes and is strengthened as we listen to the Lord's invitation to come aside. Come aside from the crowds, from the rush, from the routine, from our daily activities and experience His gracious presence. It happens here. It happens as we gather here for worship. It happens in our group Bible studies. It happens in our men's study, in our Sunday school starting up again this week, in our weekly confirmation classes soon to begin again, personal devotions and prayer time. It happens in our private confession and absolution with our pastor. Each of these and all of these are simply opportunities for Jesus to speak his ephetha to each one of us. Be opened. Be released. Be freed. And that enables us to understand and to clearly speak and to fully trust in Jesus. In the midst of our uncertainty and doubts that surround us, dear friends, we can count on Christ. He has done all things well. He even makes the deaf to hear and the mute to speak. As we sang just a moment ago, he breaks the power of canceled sin and sets the prisoner free. His blood can make the foulest clean. His blood was shed for me. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. May the peace of God, which is above all understanding, keep our hearts and minds with Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen. We'll continue our worship now with the gathering of our offerings.
number of folks for whom we pray tonight. For those who are sick or who are awaiting surgery or recovering from various kinds of illnesses, uh, Deborah Roser, Joy Wilds, Joanne Dahmer, Dave Pedersen, and I just learned tonight that his wife, Bernice Pedersen, had a heart attack, and so we want to keep Bernice in our prayers as well. Rick Allerman, John Block, Jerry Brandemule, Landon Zellick, Roger Zimmerman, Melvin Kanak, and Mary Wolfield. Uh, also, Dorothy Wagner's nephew, whose name is Jim, had a serious stroke this past week. We remember Jim and Walter, the brother of a member struggling with schizophrenia. And we also rejoice with Larry and Gail Gaugard in their 41st anniversary celebration. Would you rise for prayer? In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the baptized, that the Spirit would constantly open our ears to hear Jesus' word and set our tongues free to glorify him who does all things well, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all servants of the word, that through their preaching and teaching, the healing waters of the gospel may flow through the wilderness of this world, quenching thirst with the gift of the Spirit, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the gift of new church workers, that God would continue to raise up those who speak to the anxious of heart, reminding them to be strong, fear not, your God will come and save you. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our Congress, our President, our Justices, and all in authority in our land, that God would grant them wisdom and courage and civility and honor as they carry out their difficult responsibilities, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who suffer oppression from the evil one, for all who struggle under sickness or loneliness or grief, for all whom we have been asked to remember, Deborah and Joy, and Joanne, and Dave, and Rick, and John, and Jerry, and Landon, and Roger, and Mary, and Melvin, Jim, and Walter, and Bernice, that you, Lord, would grant them deliverance and healing according to your gracious will. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. We rejoice with Larry and Gail as they celebrate their 41 years of marriage. We thank you for bringing them together. We thank you for granting them so many blessings throughout their walk. We ask that you would continue to increase their love for you and for one another until that day when they rejoice in the fullness of your glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the faithful departed, we offer our praise and thanksgiving, and we ask Lord, for grace to join them in glorifying Christ forever. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, let your merciful ear be open to the prayers of your humble servants, and grant that what we ask may be in accord with your gracious will. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Blessed Lord, you have caused all Holy Scripture to be written for our learning. Grant that we may so hear them, read, mark, learn, and take them to heart, that by the patience and comfort of your Holy Word, we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day. And I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong, and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, 
that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless and preserve you. Amen. You may be seated for the closing hymn. 